Hello, for this second tutorial I am going to show you how to customize the functionality of this plugin. For that, create a folder called Actor Components and inside this folder create um, an Actor Component called BPC Dummy. We are going to use this Actor Component just to save a variable. So open the component and <clears throat> create a variable called name and the type will be a string and the value will be default. In order to save a variable using this plugin it is very important to check the say game flag. Sometimes these properties are hidden so just unhide the properties and check the say game flag. Now I'm going to edit the third person character from the template and you can see here that this character already has functionality so I'm going to comment it so I, I make sure that I don't touch anything of that in the future. Now add a CGD autosave and load component to this character and if you click play you can see that this component is saving and loading the character position, the character transform. But by default, this uh, plugin doesn't support um, auto saving and loading the character physics simulation. As you can see, the velocity is not being saved. This happens because the physics simulation state of a character is stored inside in a special component called character movement component. And if you want to save this custom data, you must uh, customize the functionality of the plugin. And for that, you can use the events. The most important events to use are the event uh, on save start and the event on load end. The event on save start is executed right before the actor is saved. So any change you make on this event will be saved. And the event on load end is executed right after the actors and the components are updated. So you can use this event to update the custom data. There are also other useful events such as on save start and on save end. You can read the pop up messages to know more about them. The last two events will be executed. Whether is the property destroy actor on load game if was not saved is enabled or not. This property allows you to destroy actors that could be spawned after the game was saved. So if the game is loaded again, all those actors should be destroyed. For saving the physics simulation state of this character, uh, I am going to get the property is falling and I'm going to promote this value to a variable. The name of the variable will be uh, saved is falling. So we can save the state of whether the character is falling or not. And after that, I'm going to get the character movement component and I'm going to save the velocity to get the velocity and promote this value to a variable too and I'm going to call this variable to save it velocity now as I save these two values inside the event on save start I should restore the data from these values so on load end I am going to get the values I am saving so I'm going to bring the branch save this falling and if it's true I'm going to set the character movement state to is falling set movement mode to falling so if it's true the movement state will be falling when the loads uh, end. So I'm going to do the same thing with the velocity. I'm going to set the velocity and set it to the saved velocity.
And this is the process of saving and loading custom data using this plugin. And you can see this is a pretty much a straightforward process. You can save any custom property using this method. So if we test it right now, at this point it appears that the physics simulation state of the character is being saved and loaded. But if I close the game and I open it, it will not work. And this is because um, the variables I, I saved, saved is falling on saved velocity, doesn't have the save game property checked. So let's check these properties. Now that the variables have the save game flag checked, they will be saved on disk. So if I close the game and I open it, a, the physics simulation state will be loaded correctly. And you can use this method to save any property that isn't auto saved and loaded by this plugin. So you can save uh, properties such as hidden in game or whether if a component is simulating physics or not. Maybe in your Axo you want to save uh, lots of properties, but probably you don't want to create lots of variables inside your Axo. So for that there is an alternative method you can use that is very similar to this method. For using this alternative method, let's create a macros of this functionality. I'm going to create a macro and I'm going to name save variables. I'm going to do the same thing with the load variables. I'm going to create a macro and name it load variables. Now, inside the save variables macros, instead of using a variable uh, created within the Axel, I am going to use the CGD auto save and load component to save and load our variables. So grab the CGD auto save and load component, and instead of using say, set save this falling. <coughs> I'm going to call the function set save variables. Using this function, you can save any variable you want, and in this case, I am going to save a boolean and a vector. So I'm going to execute the function, and for saving is falling, I'm going to make an array of the booleans to save. It is very important to remember the index you are using for saving your variables. So in this case, I am saving is falling in the index zero of the booleans to save and velocity in the index zero of vectors to save. Now for the load variables macros, I'm going to, s to make something similar. I'm going to call the function get saved variables and I'm going to use this function instead of the built-in variables from the Axel. So I can get the zero index from the booleans which was uh, is falling and I'm going to get the zero index from the vectors which is velocity and I'm going to set the values. Now I'm going to command these two events. I'm going to call it on save start and on load end. And uh, for showing how this system also saves and loads the data from actor components, we are going to add the component we created before to this character. I'm going to add the BPC dummy and grab it to the editor and the macro doesn't have an exec execution so I'm going to create one. I'm going to the macro and I'm going to create an execution node. 
going to call it exec I'm going to make the same thing to the low variables macro on save start I am going to change the value of the name of this actor component it was default when we created before so I'm going to call it new value on low tent I am going to print this value so we can see if this uh, actor component is being saved or not make sure the execution output is connected in the two macros By the way, there is an error here in the load variables macros, so instead of using this approach, we are going to use the sequence for keeping things more, more clean. So we are going to execute first. Uh, we are going to set the movement mode first and then we are going to set the velocity. And finally create a new pin and execute the output if we test it we can save the game and the value will be changed to new value and if I close and open the game the value will be new value so it is saving the actual component so I'm going to delete the save game file and for testing I'm going to set the save game property to false so we can see the difference so right now if I close the game and I open it the value will not be saved so I'm going to check the save game back to true the component should be saving and loading now and it's working So now, I'm going to show you how to change the functionality of the CGD autosave and load component. As you can see, by default, this component saves all the components from this axle. It saves the location, rotation, scale. And you can see that you can change the functionality from a specific component. So we are going to um, not save the BPC dummy. So if I write BPC dummy here and I set save components to false, the BPC dummy component, actor component, will not be saved. So we can see it is not being saved. Let's make the same thing with the capsule component. So I'm going to write capsule component and I'm going to set save components to false. So, right now it should not be saving and loading the transform of this actor, but it is not working, it is still saving the transform. Why is this happening? Well, because uh, when the components are inherited, the names are not the same as the ones they are shown right there. So, to make sure that you are using the correct name, there are two ways to make sure. You can grab the component and you can't print the name. So grab the component and write object name and print, print this name so you can be sure that you are using the name of this component. So I'm going to print the object name of the capsule, of the capsule component and when I click play we can see that the name is collision cylinder. The second way to get the real name of a component is to copy the component into a text. So you will see a real weird text, but in the top you will be able to see the name of the component. In this case it's collision cylinder. But don't rely on this method because which uh, some components the name is not uh, correct so for example the BPC dummy will have the name BPC dummy gen variable so I think the best method to get the real name is using 
object name and print them print it now I'm going to change the name of the capsule component to its real name so if I click play and save and load the game the transform will not be saved what is being saved now is the uh, physics simulation state for the functionality we made before but I want to save the capsule component state so I'm going to delete delete this so I'm going to wrap up this video and let's continue in the next tutorial thanks for watching